We've done many podcasts on the effects, the uh, prevalence, mm -hmm. the use of social media. Right. And today we're going to talk about an interesting article, blog, from Psychology Today about social media. Um, in the title they mentioned Twitter specifically, but they talked about some other social media apps in there. Uh, entitled, Get Off Twitter and Clean the Bathroom. I Oh, that's the title. That's the title. I, I love um, when Dr. Bernie and I talk about this um, this stuff because um, there's a there's a slight um, slight age difference um, between the two of us, and um, it's not significant. Um, but he is an adopter of all this stuff, okay? and I'm I'm not. Uh, he's almost. Uh, this is almost a first language for you. This Close. you're an early adopter. And you adopted this technology mm -hmm. early, mm -hmm. and you became facile with it. Mm -hmm. um, not as good as right. the average twenty-year-old, but Absolutely. but um, certainly good for for as old as you are. Um, I, on the other hand, because I'm a, a couple years older than Bernie, uh, missed that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> you can hardly contain yourself. Oh, man. It's right. <laughs> You're biting your lip, oh. right? And so I always like talking about this because Bernie is a user and I'm coming to it very slowly, coming to it very gradually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I like when we talk about this because you get a balanced view. Yeah. So this one is, is entitled Get Off Twitter and Clean the Bathroom, but there's a question mark. Right. It's not like a, it, it reads like a command, but then you get to the end of the sentence and you see a question mark like, are you going to clean the bathroom if you got off Twitter? Yeah. Such appears not to be the case. Right. Right? Yeah. And it begins with this... Um, um, quote from Sherry Turkle, and we've talked about her mm -hmm. yeah. on this before, because she has written a, a sort of one of the one of the early books about um, about Twitter, um, called um, a, Alone, Alone Together, together mm -hmm. right? And and the idea that um, instead of bringing us closer together, mm -hmm. um, these kind of Twitter and Facebook and all these things are right. separate. It, it really is separate. Social media is not making us more social. Right. And so the idea for somebody like me, who's a uh, later adopter um, and partial adopter, I think it's safe to say, mm -hmm. uh, our friends in the UK would probably consider me a partial adopter. Yeah. Quasi adoption. Yeah, that would be. Um, That's what they generous, would tell me. That would be a generous way to. That's say, not what I say. hear them talk about right. when I'm not there. But <laughs> they would say, yes, he's a, he's a moderate adopter, a beginning adopter. Um, and the idea that uh, what Sherry Turkle and others have said is that um, social media is is really uh, having a negative impact mm -hmm. on relationships. And if you're on social media, you're giving something else up. Right. That that's the idea here, right. and, and that's what they wanted. That's what this article is about, is if you're on social media, mm -hmm. you're giving something else up. For us late adopters, it's, I want you to talk to me, I don't want you to right. be on your phone. When I, when I see a couple in a restaurant and each is on a phone, right. um, that to me is, is troublesome and right. problematic because people should be talking to each other. And that's, what she, that's the thesis of Sherry Turkle's book. Right. Okay. This article sends us in a new direction. Right. There was a new study that was published in uh, New Media and Society right. uh, that sort of goes against that idea that um, if we weren't on social media so much, we'd be more productive and we'd be more um, engaged and some of that kind of, um, right. you know, some of those things that you were just saying. Right. Um, and so in this study, they had a um, pretty, pretty, had a pretty large good group. large group mm -hmm. of people right. and they decided to have them go um, days in a row without yeah, was, using right. um, social media. Yeah, he divided them into a week without social right. media, two weeks without, three weeks without, four weeks without. Right. And he wanted to test each of those right. groups. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, so yeah, the, and then at the end of each day, they had to fill out a journal, um, right. like a diary. Um, how do they feel? What do they do for the mm -hmm. day? How do they feel? And, and maybe that last question, how do you feel, was one of the most important things. You know, after your day without social media, right. looking at what you did, mm -hmm. um, how do you feel? Do you feel happy? Do you feel satisfied? You know, right. How do you feel about your day? Yeah, you didn't use social media. How do you feel? What did you do instead? Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about that? Right. Okay, so, so the idea there is, 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 is questioning this thing about, well, if I'm not on social media, then right. whatever else I'm doing is more satisfying. Right. That was and, the idea. And that's the reason for the, the 
different durations, one week, right. two week, three week, four week, is because the idea would be probably after the first week, people are still sort of, um, if we're going to use the uh, addiction terminology, they're still going through withdrawal. Right. <laughs> but right. Yeah. by the third or fourth mm -hmm. week, certainly they should be through that. And, mm -hmm. you know, one would anticipate that it would be sort of getting to a normal um, routine um, without social media. And you have found other satisfying activities right. to take the place of social right. media, right? And that was the idea. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and their finding, again, right. was not very, con not consistent with... It's, um, with it's not what most people would predict, right? Right. Yeah. So the overall, uh, the, the finding is that mm -hmm. um, while yeah. Turkle and other people um, have found and suggest that people on social media aren't very happy. Um, right. We did another podcast not long ago that um, people, the more you use social media, the less happy That's you tend to be. Right. Mm -hmm. um, people who aren't using social media, including these people who went three or three to four right. weeks without social media, they're not very happy with what they're doing during the day either. As it turned out, uh, turning off your social media mm -hmm. really didn't make this group of people much happier. Right. Okay? Um, we don't, we're not sure why yet, but, mm -hmm. but that was the first finding, is that they didn't seem to be any more satisfied on or off social media. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the quotes in here is that, you know, before we hated <laughs> smartphones, we hated cities. Before we hated cities, we hated something else. And well, so it goes, there's always something that we dislike. That's right. Um, it goes back to Socrates. You know, right. I, I was so shocked. We, we did, I did work in um, reading disabilities years ago, and I was surprised to learn that Socrates was opposed to reading. Mm -hmm. And he was opposed to reading because it would, it would um, if people could read, then they wouldn't have to memorize and speak. Right. And, and in his day, it was oratory. Right. It was speaking and memorizing that were valued. Okay? Right. He said, if we teach people how to read, they're going to lose these abilities. Right. They're, they're not going to be able to memorize. Yeah. And, so, and then uh, Jeff, Thomas Jefferson was concerned about industrialization mm -hmm. because it would move people from close-knit rural communities right. to, to uh, less um, uh, looser affiliations of people in cities because right. okay? they're not they're not as connected to each other as, as rural people are rural people tend to help each other right. so so TV of right. course is um, you know radio was was going to ruin the country and then TV was going to ruin right. violent video games yeah and, another quote in here is that every generation <clears throat> for every generation uh, there's some new technology that parents think is going to be the downfall of our society. Right. Um, so it's... We were told that Elvis Presley was going to be the ruination of... Well, uh, Elvis and then the Beatles. You yeah. Know, I mean, there, there's always somebody coming along. Yeah. It's going to be the ruination. Now it's rap music. You know, mm -hmm. That's going to cause the demise of our civilization. Yeah. So, so there's always something. But the, but the really important thing, again, that came from, comes from the study is that, you know, just getting off of social media isn't going to solve our problems. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there is some, there has to be some balance. Uh, we always refer to it as Goldilocks, right? You have to find some balance between um, too much use, um, no use. Uh, right. there, there's some balance in the middle that we have to find that's going to help um, keep people connected in right. the way that they want to be connected, but mm -hmm. also not overwhelm and not take us from things that we need to be doing. Right. Yeah, they call it the sweet spot, right. you know, the, the Goldilocks effect, where you get, get it just right. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that was interesting is the types of activity. I was fascinated by right. the types of activities that people engaged in. Right. Okay? So not surprisingly, if you're not on Twitter mm -hmm. or, or these kinds of social media, I guess, what would they include? Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, yeah. those sorts of things. I don't know what the others, there are many others. Facebook. Facebook. People would uh, spend more time on the internet, mm -hmm. surfing the internet, looking things up. That's not surprising. Others would uh, do cooking and cleaning. Right. You know, they would spend more time doing housework to absorb. And the third was child care. They right. would spend more, I don't know whether they would spend more time with their children, but they would spend more time in child care. And some people just spent more time at work. Right. And yeah. another spent time at work. And so, so you, it was interesting to see what the other activities were. And... When, when people were asked, did you feel better mm -hmm. not being on social media right. but doing these things, uh, they really, there was really no more satisfaction doing the other activities right. than being on social media. Exactly. Which, which that surprised me. I, mm -hmm. I would have expected that, no, this was more fun, this was better. Or, or just, you know, no, it felt good to get some things done. Right. You would think, but no. It didn't, it didn't turn out that way. Right. And so, so the, one of the conclusions that um, the author, his name is Jeffrey Hall, 
uh, one of the conclusions he made was maybe we're using Twitter just to avoid the things that we really don't want to do. Right. Really, and cleaning is certainly one of those. Mm -hmm. Hence the title, you know, right. cleaning the bathroom. Right. Uh, probably not because we're on social media, maybe because that's more rewarding or more fun than right. the other things you might do with your time. Right. But, you know, um, by and large, I think most people are getting the things done in their life that they need to get done. <laughs> They're not maybe doing it as quickly or as comprehensively as they would otherwise. They're not spending as much time doing right. those things, but they're getting them done. Right. right? I and mean, so, the kids are fed and clothed. Right. You know. Hopefully. <laughs> right. So, so. But it's a really interesting article. The link is in the show notes uh, so that you can go check it out. And, and it's the interesting thing here is this is emerging. We call right. this emerging research. Yeah. We're just beginning to study these things. Yeah. So we don't draw any hard and fast conclusions right. here. It's like spanking. The spanking studies, there's a volume. It's right. voluminous. Um, there's we have decades there's of research. Decades right? of research. Hundreds of studies involving thousands of individuals. This is, these are new. This is yeah. 134 people, yeah. I think. And so we're just beginning to learn about this. Yeah. Okay. So, but fascinating glimpse into um, what else we might do with our time. Absolutely. So, all right, that is it for today. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid.